Today on the Tim Manor Podcast Show, I've got my new mate, Ben Duffy, the owner, founder of Vision Barbers in Ancoats, Manchester. Ben, how did you get into doing barbering in the first place? Um, how did I get into barbering? Good question. Um, so I got into it basically when I was um, in year 11 and obviously I was going to be leaving school. Um, my plan was to be going in the army, so all the way through school, um, I wasn't really asked, you know, about doing well, um, grades wise and that kind of thing. So did you I, well at school? Were you were you in no, school? No, no. so I, I didn't get any GCSEs. We talked about this, really. didn't we, a little um, bit? Yeah, the only exam that I, I passed um, was RE, which me, me nan would be pretty proud of me for. <laughs> um, yeah, so just messed about because basically my plan was I, I wanted to go in the army. It's all I ever really, you know. It, Did you feel like the education system failed you from the way, the way um, that you are, the way you, you think? I, I wouldn't say that it failed me. Um, I think the part, partly like the school that I went to, it was a kind of school where if you were quite intelligent, um, you know, you're well behaved. Um, it, it, it were good for you, but then the kids in 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 you know the school that were kind of you know, not really too academically clever and... Um, what were you like at school? Um, I was naughty, mate, to be yeah. fair. Um, yeah, yeah just, just just messing about all the time. I mean, I, concentration level's just, just not there for me. Um, if I'm bored and I'm not interested in something, yeah. um, I'm not entertaining it, so... But I always, because I kind of had the planning made that I was going in the army. Um, Where did that come from, going in the army? As bad as it sounds, I'm not a serial killer, but I used to love guns right. when I was a kid, you know, like toy guns and, and watching the films and stuff like that. So it's just something that I always had in my head. Um, so anyway, l- l- long story short, because I'm going off track. So um, when, I, when I was leaving school at the end, um, I left when I was 15 because um, the because I was born in August. And I think you got like... Well, I ended up getting early study leave, so I weren't allowed in school um, while everyone was planning for the, you know, uh, revising for their exams because um, I were destructive and I were, you know, messing about with the other lads. So they gave me early study leave. So because I was, because <laughs> I was fifteen, they basically didn't win in the school. Yeah, yeah. So they, they didn't, they didn't obviously kick me out of school, but. They, yeah. they did in a way because obviously yeah. I, I weren't allowed in. I was only allowed to go in and do my exams. So. Um, but because I was 15 at the time and I couldn't sign up to the army um, until I was 16, I remember my dad saying, well, you're not just chilling at home, um, you can get a job. Um, so I used to love getting my hair cut all the time. Um, so I asked my barber, um, who used to cut my hair, I said, have you got any jobs going like, you know, just to, to tick me over until I can sign up in the army? Um, so he gave me a job and then, um, long story short, I just I just loved it, mate. I think I just love the, the social side of it because it were almost like, you know, being at c- cutting air and it, it's like being at school, you're around people and you're socialising. Have you always um, been a people person? Have you always... I think I have, yeah. I've always been a little bit of um, acting up to the crowd and, you know, wanting to like be in the mix of everything. And um, so I think doing the job that I do now, obviously, it... it, it, it suits with my personality because I can be myself I can talk to people about different things and yeah um it's quite rare yeah because you're only a young lad then to have yeah, that yeah. like you know me, when me yeah. and you talk we're very similar yeah but you're about relationships yeah. and connections and stuff yeah. like that so yeah. I just wondered where that come from yeah well I was only 15 at the time so like you say it is pretty young in it so, yeah um even now though you're still quite yeah. young yeah and, yeah and still got that mentality of yeah. like building relationships yeah up. Yeah. Where not, has that come from? Not a clue. Just naturally I within think, you? I think so, yeah. Um, yeah. I've always been like pretty, um, I think pretty confident, probably come across um, when really I'm a shit house. <laughs> <laughs> um, but always, you know, just, just like yeah. wanted to talk to people and find out what's what. I could talk to anyone in the street that I walked past and. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a big skill in it, isn't there? Yeah, 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 yeah. There is a lot of people connecting each other on phones, yeah. but like to actually go up and yeah, have a decent yeah. conversation with someone face to face. Like it's a bit of a yeah, it's a skill set. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? yeah. And I think these younger younger people now, the you know the the losing that aren't yeah, they're losing so, that massively. Um, so you, you 
Are you thinking of sacking off the army now once you've got a, a taste of this? Um, yeah, so I think um, it was more like me. My, my granddad, I remember my granddad saying like, um, you know, because I think his dad was in the army. I remember my granddad saying, you know, it's, you know, why, why do you want to go in army? And, um, you know, you don't want to do that. And I think I think it just kind of clicked to me and thought, you know what? Like, I don't think I actually do in a way. Um, and then the cutting air side of it, obviously I love that social um you know, side of meeting people, and then on on the other side of that, there, there were money as well. So I was earning money, because um, obviously at that age, fifteen, you know, you're still asking your mum and dad for you know ten quid to go to cinema or whatever you're doing. Um, whereas I, at the time, I, I, I was actually earning ten pound a day, um, so I was fifteen, um, and I worked seven days. I never had a day off. Um, cause I love that, you know, I, I got 70 quid at end of the week, you know, my mates had, had fuck all. Um, so I think that kind of sparked something in me. Um, the, the, obviously the entrepreneurial business side of, you know, earning money at such a young age. Um, so I think it were, yeah. So I think that's kind of what it, I'd say at first for the first couple of years of my career, I wasn't really like you know, I want to be a barber and I'm good at this. It was more just the pay, just to earn money, um, which, which I've always had in me from, from being younger than that anyway. What, um, this entrepreneurial side? Yeah, so like I'd, I'd always, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd always like, um, like I, I used to love my bikes, all my mates, you know, we all had bikes, BMXs and mountain bikes and stuff. And I'd always like buy a bike and then I'd be like taking it apart and selling like handlebars off to someone. And so always, you know, swapping and trying to earn a few quid when I was younger. Um, I did a paper round and stuff, you know, the standard thing, what, what everyone does. Um, Where's the graft side come from? I think the, the, the hard work the, side. The, the hard work, because it's definitely come from my mum and dad. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my mum and dad are both, you know, knowing, but, but hard working. Um, you know, I remember my dad had a, my dad's had a, had a full time job, just a normal job. He worked at Holland's Pies, my dad. Um, and then I remember him and my auntie set up a, a butty shop. Um, so then, and, and all my cousins worked in this butty shop. So, That's grafting. Yeah, so I remember like watching my dad, you know, he'd work nine to five, Monday to Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, and then weekends he'd be in the butty shop and me and my brother would go in there and you know my brother's washing up I was a bit too young at the time um, I think I might have peeled a few spuds or something like that in the back um, but just just um, my mum obviously um, my mum my used to work at the job centre um, and then she were doing like a degree um, at night as well so I've always been round that hard working you know you, you um, yeah so no, normal upbringing I've had really um but my my mum and dad have always I've I've seen them you know work hard um, to give you know we've 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 not had like you know everything given to us um, but I have they've earned it yeah they've earned it they've yeah. grafted for it yeah. um, and they've always you know my mum would always make sure that you know we had like a decent school bag and a decent pair of school shoes and that kind of stuff um, proper mate isn't it yeah proper yeah just just proper normal upbringing mate to be fair yeah. Um, but obviously, where I went to so so where where I actually grew up, um, it's it's a little village um, inside the town Accrington's where I'm from. Proper place, full of proper people. Proper people. Um, but we was like, I, I wouldn't say it's it's the nicer bit, but it, you know, it, it it is a little bit of a nicer little village inside the town. Um, but then obviously, where I went to school, you know, it was in the mix, right in the middle of a council estate. So all my mates were like. You know, some some of them they, they were coming to school with like pants that don't fit them and that kind of stuff. Um, so I always knew that. I think from a young age, without really realizing it, that my mum and dad have worked hard, and you know, I'm I'm a bit more not. I wouldn't say I'm fortunate, but I'd got I'd get a new school blazer every year. Um, in fact, I'm lying. I think I have my brothers. Um, but you know, we, we'd have like a decent school bag and a decent pair of trainers. Whereas some of my mates that live round corner from the school. Um, they didn't have that, you know what I mean. So I think, I think that's where it's amazing. It's... You think like that, Ben? You know, is it? Yeah, yeah, it is because like you're just so grateful. Yeah, yeah. Anything you get on that, you can always go back to that. Yeah, and go, yeah, you can. Remember where you come from. Yeah, and, yeah, and what you've been given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It, um, it's, honestly, that's amazing, mate. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. So you're thinking, right, Army is potentially there. I want to get into barbering. Where was that point where you were thinking, I, just, I want to do this full time? Um, I think the point where I kind of clicked with, with barbering, um, when did I click with it? Um, I'd say I, w- I was... So so basically what, what kind of happened was I was I was working in this shop when I started at fifteen. It was a little Asian barber shop. Um like me my boss would it'd be having a this is going back, you know, twelve, twelve, thirteen years ago, but it'd, it'd be like having a cig while they were cutting your hair. Oh, yeah. Proper Asian Proper. barber shop, yeah, yes. but all, all the you know, the white lads were going in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um it was the, the, the shop in town where all everyone was going in yeah. um to get a trim. So I was I was I was mingling with you know everyone really. Um, what did you ask me then, Tim? I've About like where that point was that you knew barbering that you you, you kind of yeah. So I'd I'd say me. Um... Your mind works like mine. That's why it's good to have this podcast for you because yeah. like. You so la- we talked about this about like laser focus, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. But when your laser like, focus is something, you can actually lose track of your mind so quickly I'd, that I'd way say, you're up to. Yeah, I'd say the the side of when I when I enjoy do and wanting to do it was not necessarily the fact that I was cutting people's hair and I actually love the cutting hair part. I think yeah. the bit that come first was the um, like the the. It, it, it's almost like a job where you've got a little bit of a position of power. Um, you're someone's barber, so they're coming to you. It's like a bit of a respect thing, kind of thing. So it it, it almost made you feel like you were you were a bit important, you know, because someone's coming to you. So I think I clicked with that side of it first, rather than the actual, um, you know, passion to give someone a sick haircut and 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 be buzzing off it. I think that come a couple of years into it, because um, I was just to go back. I I was bullied a little bit at school. Um, because I was small, I was tiny, I'm still tiny now, um, but I was I really small, so like in year year 10, they were like year 7s taller than me, um, and I remember some year 11s, um, when I was in year 7, they were, um, they, they were started picking on me, but it stemmed into something, because I weren't asked, even though I was small, and they were, they were giving it me, um, I were, you know, I weren't, I weren't odd. I were tiny, you know what I mean. But I weren't asked. So if, if a year eleven, you know, this big, were giving it me, I'd be giving it fucking what, you know, not, not, not holding back or anything. Um, so then I think it like turned into some of them because they knew that I'd be giving it them back. So they'd like constantly try and you know get a reaction from me. Um, Did he ever get to you that? Um. I, th- I think it, it, it kind of has done psychologically in a way later on in life, um, but you obviously don't really... That, that's a bit of a traumatic experience, in it, I guess. Yeah, massively, yeah. Because um, yeah, yeah. every day I was getting it. Yeah, yeah. Because um, even, like, no matter how hard you think you are, and yeah. you think, oh, it's not bothering me. Yeah. Some of that well, there stuff, is an element, of that stuff is, gets through, Yeah, yeah, it? of course it does. Um, but, you know, it's on the outside, so I, I don't even think I were even thinking it, it, it were affecting me. It were more like... You know, you want to fucking... I'm not asked. You know, one of them. Like, trying to prove a point, I think. Um, when really, it, it probably were impacting me. Yeah. Um, so... So, you having this... Where you, you you sat barbering with people, right? And you've got, like, a bit of self-worth. that This person's come in relying on you. Yeah. I, Did, do you ever attach that to the bullying? Where you, Yeah, you, I think it does, because... Cause, it, it were almost like I, I probably felt like through school because I, I was small it was like I had a bit of a point to prove that I am someone like don't just pick on me because I'm small um, so then I think when someone then as a client's coming sitting in your chair and you're going to cut their hair for them they, you've auto, they've automatically got respect for you so I think that Kind of what you know. Interesting that, isn't it? Click to me where it's like. What have you thought? Have you thought about that before? Have you? Um, when only now. Now I'm actually saying it out right, loud. Right, I'll be right. honest. Now, now I'm kind of delving yeah. back. Um, I it's think, interesting, isn't it, mate? Yeah, yeah. I think it is. Um, I mean, we talked. You know, we talked a little bit. You know, we've not known each other that long, have we? we talked about the mental health side of it. Yeah. This is what we're talking about right now. Yeah. 
these like traumatic experiences yeah, that, yeah. You know, even as small as the thing they didn't what's it actually affect you yeah of course it on. can yeah yeah um so from that point there that moment you're thinking you know what i actually think this is this is for me yeah i yeah. really like to set this yeah. as a career what happened where what did you go there um so what happened after that so um so because i was 15 um so i worked a year there um and then the basically the the guy well obviously it, it was illegal really to work there and get paid ten pound a day because it was I think the the minimum wage for like a sixteen year old were like three pound fifty an hour or something. Right. And I think if you worked it out how many hours I were doing, I run like a quid an hour. So my dad started getting pissed off because then it, you know it would meant to be like a bit of a summer thing, um, and then obviously as time's gone on. You know, it were a full time job, and I was still there, and he was still giving me a tenner a day, um, and then um, I forgot what you've asked me to. It's fine, mate. Where did with that point where you're working in the Asian barber shop? Yeah. So you're working in the Asian bar barber shop. Yeah. Um, and then was that the point where you went right? Now was the time. Um, I'm going to take it full time. Yes. How old were you then? I was 16, so basically my dad said, if you're going to do it, um, you need to go to college and get your qualifications and sign up. It was when the, the proper apprenticeship right, scheme right, right. started then. Um, so my dad was like, you the need to go to college. City and apprenticeship. City and Guild, yeah. Right, the, yeah. Um, the, um, like the, 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 the cert yeah, certificate head. Yeah, yeah. Um, is City and Guild. So um, I went, so I started um, college. And while I was at college, I met a woman um, who she was in her forties, and she had her own barber shop in Rottenstall. But because she'd not, she'd done her training years ago, and she had her own business. She would come back to to college, you know, to get the qualifications. So anyway, I ended up meeting her, um, got on with her really well. She, I think, she's seen some potential in me, um, and then she gave me a job. So it was like a proper apprenticeship, then like hundred and fifty quid a week. Um, you know, proper set up in a salon, you sign How did you to, feel? Uh, I was buzzing, mate, because it, it, it were, um, I, I were buzzing because cause of the wages, because I, I remember at the time, I think the average apprenticeship wage were like 80 quid a week or 100 quid a week. And this one were like, it might have been 160 quid a week or 170. So I were, you know, my mates were earning 100 a week and I were earning 170 and it were like, you know, that, that got like me it clogs turning again and I were like right you know I'll, I'll, I'll go Does it always this. come back to the bullying thing do you think the, um, uh, 170 kind of prove yourself it's do like you know what small. I think it is yeah I, I, I think it is e even now I, I, I feel like I've got a point to, to prove, prove all the time yeah right. um, so it, it, you know looking at it it makes sense doesn't it yeah it does make perfect sense um, yeah yeah so You're mad isn't it yeah mad mad mate but like I've said to you before, I think anyone, anyone that wants to and, and that has their own business, I think you've got issues. Yeah, there's some sort of thing you're trying to prove through your yeah, childhood, yeah, 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 yeah. or some sort of issue yeah. to think like, why would you want to go on your own yeah. and try and make a living on your own? Yeah. Um, there's there's some there. I know people fall into it, you know, naturally and yeah. and that kind of thing, but. Yeah. Um, I think majority of people that that you know run their own business and work for themselves, there's some I, sort. I, I, mean, of I told you. I mean, the reason I'm doing this is just so I can well, help head, help ramp. Yeah, <laughs> fucking nuts, mate. Mad. Just like the book, you know, from the trauma. I know what it's like to be alone. I know what it's like to not have anybody to rely on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, through the thing, I've you know, like you've been a disruptor. Yeah. Um, and people have just like put me to one side or yeah, it's not yeah. amount to anything. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. I've set this branding agency up so I can brand people like yeah. you and other people have been called disruptors and stuff like that. Yeah. Just, just to prove that look. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's interesting. I, I remember my maths teacher saying to us, we're all messing about. Um, and she said, uh, she said, it's all right. She said, because uh, when, when you leave here, um, she said, uh, I, "I know what you'll end up doing." She said, "You'll you'll just end up being a, being on benefits." I remember her saying it to me, and it it, it, it always stuck with me. Um, again, and, and again, not being asked, it were like, "Well, fuck you then." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Do you know what I mean? Someone yeah. to, like, I, I, she said it in front of all classroom and yeah. like embarrassed me and sent me out. And I remember her saying it to you, yeah. to me, you know, and people were laughing. Um, Again? Yeah. So it's been, I remember yeah. my French teacher said to me, Man, has stopped daydreaming, you're not going to amount to anything. Yeah, yeah. And he should just look out the window. And I do it still to this day. Yeah, just look yeah. out the window and just daydream. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just, I think I've just been trying to prove to him. Yeah. Just like, I'm getting fucking paid for it now, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. How would you like me now, Mr. Black? Yeah, yeah. Miss Martin, she were called. Can I say her name? Of course you can. Not? Yeah, yeah, Miss Martin. Yeah. Dickhead. But again, I know, but <laughs> if it weren't for Mr. Park and Miss Martin, yeah, yeah. you know, the driving they force, the fuel. your journey without you, you realising, you know, everything that you go through when you are younger, it's uh, every process in your life, it's, uh, yeah. you know, sometimes it doesn't always go the right way, but it, it, it's leading you up to something. Um, it's, a, it's a journey, isn't it? You're on, you know, we're all on a journey and anything that happens that's good or bad, it, it's, you're carving your way through and it can yeah. leave. You know, um, how old are you? I'm 27. Just well, turned mate, 27. Such yeah. Such a fucking mindset for your age, you know. Yeah. It's got really old way of old looking dead. at things, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. An old that, that's the job. That's the job. So obviously, if I'm going 15, I will cut in 50 year old men's hair. Yeah. So, that, so you've got to learn to yeah. act accordingly. Um, we talked about dinner about the chameleon, about a change into your environment. And yeah, yeah. You've got a fifty-year-old guy in your chair, then you you certain way, then you got then you've got to adapt to that conversation. Yeah, yeah, of course you do. Then yeah. adapt to what's yeah, it, which yeah. has then made you in the sort of the yeah. man you are today through the yeah, conversations. Yeah, yeah. Mad that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's, in fact, it's meant that actually, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Well, it's cust- any, any customer service job, you you're going to get that, but obviously, I don't think. But you well, you're with an hour though with yeah. somebody, aren't you? Who's had the world of knowledge? Well, yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, so rather than just selling someone something behind yeah. the counter you're spending time with them um, but then but know, the good thing about you is you've moved quite a bit haven't you you've gone from the Accrington to Rottenstall to Manchester yeah, and so it comes I, with that with people yeah, within them areas yeah. as well and you're having these conversations yeah yeah so then after so to, to obviously cover the story so when I went I, I went to Rottenstall um, to work for, for the lady that I met at college Michelle Um lovely woman off, off her head from Essex proper bonkers like Essex bird yeah um, and she, she probably won't mind me saying this but I I, I ended up getting sacked from there because um, <laughs> basically she she were um, she, she loved like all the beauty treatments so she, were, she were a bit of a dolly bird so she were always like she'd work two or three days in the shop we was all in there full time and she'd like come in and she'd like take 200 quid out till and she'd go and get like laser hair done or yeah. she were always she, she were a spender she was to do what she, she wants to do she business, yeah. shout out to you Michelle yeah do what you um, want but I remember it, it we, we got paid every Friday um, and I was going out on the Friday um, and she she weren't um, I, th- I, I, I don't think there was any cash in the till for her to give me wage um, so I remember it, I'd, I, we'd had like a bit of a falling out over something I can't remember what did the what. old Ben come out the old Ben come out <laughs> the, 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 the dickhead Ben come out so I remember it, me, I was going on out on this Friday night and I needed my wage to go out um, to get a bottle of a bottle of vodka and all that because yeah, we yeah, was out yeah. um, and she, I remember her saying to me um, you know I've, I've not got your wages this week I'll have to give it you next week and uh, and I remember thinking like, well, no, I've, I've I've worked this week, you know. But she she was a very a very powerful, strong character, very like you know yeah, yeah. she she was quite intimidating sometimes to work for. Um, but then the the Ben you know that don't give a fuck Ben come out and I remember saying well no I'm I'm going out and yeah. I work this week and I want my wage. And I think she said, like, you know, what are you speaking to? And I can remember saying it. I was all young at the time. And, it, 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 you know, it's, it's quite embarrassing, really. But I remember saying to her, listen, I'll just take the till. I remember just saying that to her. Um, and anyway, she told me to, like, get out. Because um, I was a bit of a hothead as well when I was younger. So I've lost my rag now and everything's gone out the window. I'm not thinking straight. And I've gone, I'll, I'll, I'll take the fucking till. Um, and yeah, obviously the, the other people in the shop were like thinking what the fuck's going on here um, so she sacked me she sacked me um, so then after that me, so my auntie had just opened up a, a salon an hairdresser's so not a barber's an hairdresser's 
Um, and obviously there was a lot of women going in, but the, obviously they all had husbands and fellas. So I remember my me, me auntie, bless her, um, Lorraine, she said, um, and, and she, she's a top hairdresser, like, you know, really, really talented, been doing it years, um, really busy. Um, and she said, well, why don't you come here um, and you can do the lads there in the shop. Where is this? Where is it? In Accrington. So yeah. I'm back in Accrington now. Yeah. Um, she just opened this new salon, really nice shop. Um, so I was like, yeah, sweet. Because I, cause I, I, I weren't self-employed, but I think I was going to end up getting paid more money by working there. So I thought, right, sound, we'll do that. So as I got into it, she were like crazy busy, back to back all day. And it was just her on her own because she just opened the shop. So she said to me, um, you know, why don't you do a bit of hairdressing? So obviously women's hair and men's hair is two completely different things. Um, so I remember saying, um, so I didn't really want to do it at first. I was a bit embarrassed to be like, um, you know, I don't want to be an hairdresser. Like I'm a barber. And it was that ego, like, you know, people are, are people going to think I'm, you know, a bit fruity or whatever, but you know, which is, is fine mm. anyway, but it was that, you know, what, what would people think if I'm doing women's hair? But anyway, she, she, she taught me into it and, and I ended up doing it. Um, best thing I ever did, because I won't be able to cut hair to the level that I can cut hair now if I didn't have the, you know, the, the skill set, what you learn at doing women's hair. Um, so I, I would, but, but always grafting hard, always busy and in busy shops. So it were like, I'd do like three lads haircuts one after the other and then I'd put a colour on for her and then while colour were on, I were doing a couple of haircuts and then I'd wash the colour off, you know, and I'd dry her client's hair for her and then straighten someone else's and then I'd do three more haircuts and so I fast like wow. graft, mate. Did you like that? Um, I loved it, yeah, because your, your ADHD works, it? Yeah. fast, just, just yeah, dum, yeah, um, yeah. so it, so it, it fit well. How long were um, you there for? I was there for about three years. Yeah. Um, but working with women, so going back to that people skill set. Yeah. I, I was working with a lot of women then. Um, what did he? What did he teach you working with women? Um, how mental they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did it teach me? I think respect, respect for women as well. Yeah. Um, definitely. You know, women are obviously completely the yeah. opposite sex to men, aren't they? So, yeah. um, and they think differently and, you know, you're pro. Did he, did he soften Ben a little bit? I think it did a little bit, yeah, because that kind of like, you know, weren't at, like, yeah. you, you know, you approach women differently and you talk to women differently about yeah. how you would treat and, and talk to a man anyway. Yeah. Um, going back to this old school, you know, mentality a bit. But you do, don't you? If a woman's in your presence, you know, you're going to you you watch what you're saying yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, your language and, and going from talking all sorts of stuff in a barbershop yeah. to then in yeah. a salon with women. Um, it's two completely different dynamics. So. It shapes you this, hasn't it? Everything that you've been through. Yeah, yeah, like, massively. I feel, I feel like that's probably your best learning yeah, experience. Yeah, 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 definitely. Being an hairdresser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's made you the barber you are today because 100%, of hundred percent. I'm so that that's one thing that I'm so grateful for that she gave me that job and told me to learn hairdressing. Because um, the make you drop your ego. Yeah, got, got yeah, rid of yeah. the dickhead yeah, Ben a little yeah. bit, didn't it? Yeah, I think it was more like thinking, you know, are people gonna, um, you know, like not bully you, but are people gonna give you a bit of shit? Like, what are you doing, birds? Which hair? comes back do... to Ben getting bullied yeah, before yeah, yeah. he's gonna get disrespect yeah. again. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Everyone's gonna start calling. Yeah, yeah. Um, which thankfully it didn't really. I don't think anyone kind of. I don't think anybody cares. No one they? really asks, but you, you make up these assumptions yeah. in your these mind. These stories in you? your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you're there three years. Three years. What? Well, how did that come to a close? What opportunity was so given to you? Basically, it, it got to the point where she, we were that busy doing hairdressing. Um, it were like I didn't have time to do the lads, to do the barber inside, which is what my passion has always been yeah. for. Um, so you know not her fault she's running a business and she needed me we were so busy um, so it got to a point where I was doing like just women's hair and then weren't really fitting many lads in um, and it started to like I was losing the interest with it because yeah. I think my passion like weren't me really knowing has always been cutting men's hair um, so then uh, I think it's just because what the way your mind works I've been mean, colouring like a lady's hair must take hours I was, yeah. And, and then it's 
Black but she operated she operated right. a sick system where like a lot of hairdressers will have one client and they'll put the colour on, yeah. they'll go in the back, have a brew, wait for the colour to, 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 to develop, um, and then they'd, they'd wash it off and do their hair. Whereas her were like, one woman was in having a colour, um, while her colour's been put on and then it's developing, because obviously it takes an hour or so to develop, there'd be someone else in 10 minutes after. So she'd have like three colours on at once smart business really um so that's why she needed me because then it'd be like right wash that off right, right i'll right. cut it you dry it um and we just operated like a like a yeah. like a like a, like a, a, a conveyor belt really me and me and her did shout, it out, to michelle. shout out to michelle yeah I'll yeah give you that. lorraine lorraine, lorraine me or michelle, michelle was, was the, the essex right. the essex woman yeah um yeah so then what happened after that? So then, yeah, so it, it got to the point where obviously I was just doing women's hair. Um, I was still doing men's, but mainly women. Um, and then I think I, w- I were getting to the point where um, I wanted more money, really. Um, and because she, it was only kind of me and her in there and it was a new business, obviously she's paying all the bills to the shop. I didn't really think like this then, but you know, now I've got my own business and, and rent to pay and stuff myself. You, you, you understand it, but um, so I wanted more money um, and she she couldn't, if she could have done, she would have done, she should have given it me. Um, but I think financially, you know, I were kind of capped at what I were making. Um, and then all, always wanting more, always wanting to, to grow and wanting to have better things and um, and so I re- they, it were a massive thing what I did I was only 19 at the time um, so obviously living in Accrington Manchester's like 50 minutes away um, and I can remember going as a kid with my mum on the bus we'd go over to Manchester shopping it was like a big day out um, you know your, your mum you were going to Manchester kind of thing so I remember just I, I, I was downstairs and um, in the salon and I, I just started googling barbering jobs um, and an advert come up for one in Manchester so I remember clicking on the website and seeing how much they charged because um, I used to cut air for a fiver in my auntie's shop it was five quid for a trim um, and I remember seeing this shop in Manchester and it was £24 for an air cut and I were only 19 at the time and I thought Fucking hell! I thought, <laughs> I'll, have I thought I'll have some of that. Um, so I remember I, I was out the back in the shop and I just rang it straight away. Um, and I said, "Hey mate," I said, "I've seen your job, your job advert online. Um, you know what? What's the crack?" He said, "Right." He said, uh, "Come over, come over and bring a model, and, and I'll see. You know if you can cut air or not, basically." Um, so I remember got I got one of my mates and we drove over in my little Toyota Yaris. Um, Went over, did this haircut, um, and and it, and he were buzzing basically because the 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 skills that I'd learned working with the the yeah, three different, different people, yeah. So, level. so what a lot what tends to be a lot of people will do they'll they'll, they'll train at a shop when they're sixteen and then they'll stay there. But in our industry, when you work whoever you're working alongside of, you're picking up skills off them. Um, but because I'd had the the background of the Asian barbershop which are really good with like the cutthroat work sharp lining skin fade that kind of stuff yeah. I were like I picked that up probably a lot better than barbers that had worked in a certain shop for 10 years yeah. they couldn't like you know line up as clean as what I could do and as fair as clean uh, you know uh, as well as I could do so when I went over to the city um, to this shop um, Ross, he's, Ross, he's been rubbing his hands together. Well, it, it, his background was um, like hairdressing for like ten years. So before he went into barbering, yeah, um, it it done hairdressing. So then I think he's seen you know my potential in how you know clean my work was, um, and obviously having a bit of skill set of hairdressing as well. It, it it makes you into you know good good stuff at cutting. Yeah. Um, so then. He, he basically rang me up the day after and he said, right, you know, when can you start? Um, so I remember him, he sat me down in the back and he talked me through the the wages um, of, of what you're doing. I were only 19 um, and it, 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 it were like, it were, it, were, it were good money. Yeah. Um, 
how are you thinking of getting there? What are you doing? Like, I was gonna, just, gonna just drive driving the minutes. Toyota over, yeah, every day. I weren't asked, Tim. I, 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 I weren't asked. I don't, you know. That grafter's mentality. Yeah, thing. just, you know, it didn't, it didn't even, I'm buzzing, me. I'm buzzing to fucking get to Manchester and go on and, you know, going from like 150 a week to like 150 a day. I don't give a fuck, mate. I'm fucking going over there. Um, first one in, last one out all the time. I'd like stay on and, you know, anyone else wanted a trim after we've done a full day's work. I want one in there locking up because I'd do that extra haircut just to get another 15 quid. Um, so, yeah, so but that so so when I started there, um, that shop became... What is, what is, at this point in your life, mate, 19, what, what, what is that money to you? What, 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 what relationship have you got with that money? What does it, what does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, I think it's again that like proving summer. So like, I've, I've always, I love my cars, me anyway, because my dad's always loved cars. I remember my dad used to have, I weren't born then, but he had four Capris. And I remember like my dad always telling me, you know, about his cars. And so I had a thing for cars. So like, I'd always, it well obviously you know money buys things don't you so it were always that like when I look back now because I so as soon as I got this job um within six months of me being there went straight to Mercedes bought um brand new C-Class so we're driving a C-Class Merc at um at 19 earning really good money but yeah. living at my mum and dad's house still so I was spending it spending it it had come in one day and three days later it's gone um, but like good wages, I was earning at nineteen, probably you know more than what people are earning now in the in the thirties and forties. Um, I, I was working for it, I was working my ass off for it. But it, it with that like when, when I think back, it's like having to prove something. It's not it's not in an arrogant way. Like look what I've got. It's more like you think I'm you know I'm I'm, I'm a, not not am I a, a dickhead, but like it's like wanting to it's not a show off thing like look at me and look what I've got it's not I'm, I'm down to earth and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it how it is I think it was more like um, like a bit of a like like respect me like me kind of thing probably going back to this you know yeah. the bullying that I had when I was younger yeah. um, you just wanted that recognition of the recognition. kids who bullied you going okay now he's doing well yeah I, I, yeah in, yeah, being honest, it, it is, it, but not definitely. Like, I can't stress this enough, and I'm not just saying it because we're on here. But it's not a, a an arrogant thing at all. It's more like you think I'm a piece of shit, and you're gonna bully me. Who's fucking driving round in a fucking nineteen? Uh, you know, uh, nineteen driving a brand new Mercedes, and you know I've got the best courts on Stone Island jumpers, spending all my wages, um, but always having that point to prove. Um, which is sad in it, really. No, um, you're only nineteen. Well, yeah, but but that's what it's all kind of come from. Yeah. Um, and it's what... important to spread this message, mate, and not me and you talk. You know, people try and not make choices from trauma. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, try and ask yourself questions. Why am I doing this? And look, yeah, look, it's reflection in yeah, it, yeah. what people don't do. Yeah. I, think, I think you should. You want a nice watch and a Mercedes, yeah. and, it's, and you want it for yourself because it cool, right? Yeah, but you're making yeah. a decision to prove to somebody else who getting someone else to like it. No, that's not a good yeah. decision. Yeah, I mean, I do love cars. So on the other side, I were like, this is fucking going off. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm flying around town yeah. in a fucking. It's a, uh, it's a weird dynamic going yeah, on in your weird, head though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do want it, but really I'm doing it for somebody else. Yeah, but yeah, I'm like... yeah, yeah. Um, but as you'd like to you say, you go on and you're a bit more self-reflection, you start thinking, why do I want this guy? Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I did all them things and, and made them choices that I made. Because like you say, now I'm, you know, I, I was going from spending all my money, whereas now I'm very, I'm, yeah. I am very sensible with money and I know I invest and I'm... Yeah. Um, you know, I've made them mistakes of, you know, I, I even, I think I even got into like, um, like two grand into an overdraft, I remember. Um, but I was earning like really good money. So I were even then spending more than what I was earning, yeah. um, you know, up until like 21 year old. But then, then if I flipped it on the end and it's like, right. How did you flip it on the end? Um, I think just because I'd kind of done everything dead quick. 
and dead fast and bought you know all the jackets that I wanted and the clothes and we were going Amsterdam every weekend that it kind of lost it time and yeah and holidays and doing doing whatever you wanted to do quite young and having everything I could have anything that I wanted like yeah. w- w- what a 19 20 year old would ever want um, Rolex yeah. um, you know doing all them things and then um, and then obviously it, then, then it puts you in a position then where you then, I'm in my overdraft, I'm earning all this money and then it's like, what am I doing? So I think something just switched um, and I just thought, I'm, I'm not operating right here. Um, cause, so going back, when I, when I started working in Manchester, um, obviously going into the city, mm. the clientele that you're cutting, it's, it's like worlds apart from yeah. people that are in Accrington. Um, you're actually cutting people's hair like you who want to make something yeah, of their life yeah. who have kind of, not yeah. saying people from Acton don't do that yeah yeah no, but not you've got all. businessmen yeah, you've yeah. got like you know the, you've in, cut in yeah. you know I can remember I'd seen it like the you know the lads like who I knocked about when I was younger everyone wanted like you know the newest Air Max and da 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 and then when I started going over to Manchester there were kids like you know um, having like 15, 20 grand Rolexes on driving BMWs um, so it was like that next level up, yeah. um, and then that that were a massive turning point for me to um, to to look and realise and think like fucking hell, I want this. This is what I want. You know, like businessmen that that are wealthy and um, you know doing really well for themselves. And I, that if, if I think if I didn't take that job from Accrington you know, to, to go for, to Manchester from Accrington. I definitely wouldn't be where I am now. It opened so many doors, doors and opportunities and the people that I'm... More more me being um, observing all the time and seeing what, you know, how the city is because um, it's so different to a town, to the city. Yeah. Um, and what people don't, like, don't realise is the city is full of people from these small towns that then just find the way there like no one's born in manchester city center yeah. they all live on outskirt towns or some you know all over the country and then they go to uni and yeah. um obviously the city's where things happen you know all like your, your brands that you see on your phone yeah. nike and whatever else they're all doing like photo shoots in city center in studios and businesses that are you know that are going on everything's happened in the cities manchester london liverpool um so then you start cutting these kind of people's hair um, that work in you know these industries and and it was just a massive like fucking hell there's a big world out there and like this is how this is how every, like where everyone's doing it kind of thing. And is that where you got your taste for? Look, I want to have my own barbers. Yeah, I think so. So again, um, I can remember working at the one in Manchester and I, I, I've always not in an arrogant way, but I've always loved money. Like I said, I've always wanted to. Um, earn and do well and again probably that point to show people that not that I am a show off because I'm not yeah. um, but wanting to better myself not, not even to show anyone more for me it's like I'm in a war with myself all the time to better myself um, what's that like fucking tough mate because you I'm constantly I'm getting better at it but I'm 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 harsh on myself and I, t- I torture myself with it really as, as sad as it is um you know, you're not doing good enough and, yeah. and before you know it, you get an unhealthy relationship and you're looking at other people's businesses and you're thinking, well, I want that. Why have I not got that? Um, and it, and it's negative and, you know, then you start to it, the emotions are getting depressed and um, I've been through it all. I've been through all Can you talk it. about that a bit Yeah, we could talk me. about talk, it. Talk yeah. to me about the sort of the depression side of um, it. I think, um, I'd say it only kind of... Well, Depression, obviously, there's different aspects to it, isn't there? Um, and different emotions with it, kind of thing. Um, I think I first realised and, and obviously felt depression um, probably when I was 23 when I opened my first shop. Um, it was just before COVID. Um, long story short, I, I ended up setting up a shop with someone, went into business with someone, COVID come, um, and um, we had to shut the shop. That's a very shortened version of this story, but we yeah. can go into that another time. Yeah. Um, so it was locked down. My missus has found out she's pregnant. Um, I've obviously, I've gone from, you know, having good money coming in. Um, everything's like, just opened up my first shop. I was only 23. 
Um, and then I just, I, I, so what I've not touched on, I, I used to love smoking weed um, when I was younger. So I think I would live in a very like, you know, I would work in Lords. So it were like long hours. I was driving from Accrington to Manchester every day. I was smoking weed. I was tired. I weren't looking after myself. I weren't training in the gym. Um, and then I just opened up this shop. I'm caning the weed at this point because I'm like stressed. Um, we've opened up this new shop. Um, and then I just lost my head in lockdown. Um, it were like, I think because I'd, I'd, I was abusing smoking weed. Um, my head just went um, and then it got to like, I've always been, you know, outgoing and like energetic, always wanting to do stuff to the point where I'm like, it were, it were locked down for the first week. I just opened up the shop and now we can't go to work. My routine's all out. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I, I didn't want to get out of bed. I were absolutely fucked. Um, and 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 it were dark mate and i had some fucking really dark days with it and it were like i, I just i didn't want to be here anymore there were, there were definitely days and i were i remember getting in the car and i were because it were locked down there were no one on the roads um i remember driving over to my shop um just for something to do you know just just to get out the gaff yeah um and i remember driving over and i, I, I and, and I went into my shop and I opened it up and put shutters down. I just sat there and just cried on my own. Um, I think because everything had been like a big roller coaster of like, I've, I've never really had a break, me. Um, always always worked and always had to keep going and, and never stop and turn off. And I think when COVID came and it was locked down and everything kind of stopped because the full world, world stopped. Um, I think everything just hit me. Um, maybe all the stuff that I'd, I'd been through before, you know, when I was younger, and um, there's obviously some stuff that I've not touched on, and um, from from when I was growing up, and different situations that I ended up getting myself into with people in Manchester and yeah. and whatever else, um, and I think it all just hit me, um, yeah, and just just um, yeah, didn't want to be here. Um, you having suicidal thoughts? Yes, yeah, su suicidal thoughts. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was um, as sad as it is. Um, but then I remember. Um, how did you? What? 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 what how I overcome it was. Um, I've always wanted. A, I've always wanted children. Me. I don't know why. I've always wanted my own ch like kids. I, 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 kids are mint, aren't they? And and, and um, I remember. I remember thinking in my head, like I'm in a bad way here, and I've never really been thinking like this before. I've never had suicidal thoughts and being depressed and down and. I remember thinking to myself, like, what can save me? Like, you know, what, what, how can I, how can I get out of this? Um, and I remember thinking, um, if me misses, if we have a baby, um, <laughs> I, like, I'll be, like, it, it, I've got, I've got to be there for some reason. Then. Yeah, um, yeah. And That's then, amazing, man. Yeah, and so not to sound, not to go into it too much and to sound too deep, but yeah. when my missus and my missus don't even know this, so she's obviously going to see this and watch it. But when 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 my missus told me she was pregnant, my little girl saved my life because um, I knew I knew that I were having her, um, and then obviously I knew that if if I've got a child, I can't I can't kill myself. Because I've got some, I've someone's relying on me, and I've got to be there for them. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, so I know it's, it's pretty, yeah, yeah, no, I know it's pretty deep, um, as as sad as it is. But yeah, that 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 was yeah. that was my thought process. And then when we found out we we're having a little girl, because um, my mum's always wanted a daughter as well, and I wanted to make her proud. All I wanted were a daughter, because my mum always told me and my brother that you know I wish one of you were a girl kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I. I, I, I I, I, I was praying for a daughter. I remember, please, you know, I, I need a daughter. I just want a little girl, um, and God bless her, I've got her. Um, so yeah, that that's the truth, mate. To be honest, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. So pretty mad. So there you go. Um, yeah. So when it, when when you knew that, yeah, the the switch in your head came, and you you were like, right, okay, 
time to yeah time to change up now and, um, and what what did you do fucking hell mate got me that yeah, so, yeah sorry <laughs> it's deep mate yeah. it's, no it is it's, it's beautiful yeah, mate it's what beautiful. fucking beautiful yeah, yeah. fucking yeah, yeah. story that, that's what happened um, yeah I appreciate you telling me yeah yeah honestly, I've really never do. told anyone that to be fair so appreciate that, yeah it. she did my little girl and, and now like you know going through the motions now all the time and you know, business and stress and life stress, and you have your days where you think, "Oh, fucking hell!" Like, because yeah. uh, I, I do suffer from mental health. Yeah. Not, not, not every. You know how it is. If yeah. you know yourself, you uh, and everyone, I think it's because I, you're such a deep thinker, mate. Yeah, I mean, I think deep, you'd like, deep. like really yeah, deep, yeah. don't you? Probably the weed smoking that's um, that's not helped that smoking weed. Um, I think it's just the way you. I think the weed has been a sort of thing for you to control it. Yeah, he does more, I, more than yeah, more yeah, than yeah, anything, does. mate. Yeah, he does. And see, just to sort yeah. of dampen it. Yeah. It's the way your thoughts, you're so laser focused, you're yeah. so what's it. There's nothing arrogant about you at all. In the yeah, thing. yeah. I, th- I think the money thing is attached to proving to other yeah, people it that yeah, this it fucking crazy thought, like fucking disruptor, small yeah, kid, yeah. like what's it? It's yeah, literally yeah. that. Yeah, because yeah. you're not asked about money. Are yeah, you? yeah. Are you? Re- do you, know, do you know really? What? All, all I'm really asked about, it, it's not for me. Um, especially now, you know, my missus, um, who's absolutely amazing and she's put up with all sorts of shit, you know, my missus gone through <laughs> all these imagine. emotions with me, I'm fucking hard work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but f- now it's like, uh, even even when I've had, you know, a girlfriend in the past, I've always, and, and even my mates, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm it, it's not for me, it's for you. Like, like yeah. you know, if I had 10 quid on me, and my mate didn't have any money, you know, I'll buy his chocolate bars and, you know, even from being young, but now it's like, I want to give me, and my missus thinks I'm mad and she's like, and she'll say things like, you're never going to be happy and, because the goals that I, that I expect myself to, to, to reach um, and to do, um, it's probably sad to her to hear it because she knows I am being genuinely serious and some of the stuff that I'll say, she's like, y- 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 you're off your head. Um, because I want to give them a life that, you know, that that makes me feel happy. I love business. I love working. Working for me, I'll never stop. Um, I'll never retire and stop it. It keeps me going. Yeah. Um, and I want to, you know, put me my family in a position that that I I've not been in. Not that you know. Again, but that, what, at what point is Ben going to be proud of himself? Um, I'm pr- I'm proud of myself now in a way. Um, am I no proper Ben? Come on. Um, yeah, not. Um, you're just saying it. You're I don't saying know. It again. Yeah, no, just like the yeah, yeah. like the kids didn't bother you about yeah, bullying. Yeah. You're just like Do you know fucking don't Tim, bother me. I think I'm I'm at a stage which which is something that I need to obviously work on and figure out. But it's not about me. It's about like like my daughter and my missus and my, and the people around me and the the you know going on to the business side of it the staff that work for me yeah um and you know staff that will work for me in future when is the last time you looked at yourself in the mirror and said i'm proud of you um i um i I've, i i don't think i have done ever but but i'm, I'm aware of you know, I'm aware of how I am and, and I'm not perfect. I'm fucking far from perfect and I fuck up and I make mistakes all the time, but I'm, my intentions are good. Um, you can't ask the question, can you? No, I can't. What were the, what, what were the questions? Well, you <laughs> sat just for one minute, Ben, yeah. and just said that you're proud of yourself or looked in the mirror and looked at the man that stares back and said, I'm really proud of where you're up to um, in your life. I've never done, I've never done that. You need to. Yeah, no, no. You need to stop. Yeah, man, yeah. Just have a watch I, I just look, think... There is fuck all. Doing all these things for your missus and your kids and your staff and stuff like that, I do the same thing, but yeah. there is points where I stop. I literally, I've got a quote on my wall upstairs from Ferris Bueller, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you're going to miss it. Yeah. And I... Well, I have that, and that, that's, and yeah, yeah, it, that, that's like mental health, and I've, I've been through times where, like, I've said to, you know, how I describe it is, like, when I'll be sitting playing with my little girl, um, and it's like I'm not there, I'm, 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 phys- not present. I'm, I'm physically, I'm physically present, but I'm, I'm, but my mind's somewhere else, and this is, you know, why I've been, um, you know, I'm trying to get diagnosed now with ADHD, and maybe get some medication, which I, I've always been against taking, and, yeah. Um, cause I think when I, when I smoked, what I found was when I, when I smoked weed, yeah, um, it was kind of a medication to well, slow. It, 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 I could think of one right, topic. Okay. I would, I would present, yeah. I, although we're absolutely yeah. peppered cause I was, I was smoking loads of it. 
Um, I felt like I could, how I describe it, I could focus on one thing and it slowed everything down and channeled everything. Um, but then obviously on the flip side of that, you then get in your anxiety when you've not had it and, you yeah. know, depression and da 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 and, you know, you're abusing drugs, aren't you, really? I know people Pretty might much. only say it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. weed, but for me, it were having a, yeah. a negative effect, whereas some people, it might have a positive effect on them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Fucking. Yeah, mad. Mad. Yeah, yeah, mad. Um, but yeah, so, so you know, I, I do need to work on this kind of... Um, being grateful for you. Yeah. Not be, for things around yeah, you, yeah. being grateful for yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. tough, mate. It's tough. It's tough, and I'm very. T- I am. You've got very an amazing mind, myself. by the way. Yeah, you know? mad. I'm absolutely. It's, if, I, it's I won't not. Want it's anyone amazing, to live mate. In my it's head. a it's fucking. Mad as fuck. you, but you've been given a gift. Yeah, yeah, you? yeah, yeah. It's like you've got a fucking superpower. Yeah, yeah. I can tell with him how your mind works. Yeah. I'm not on the level that you're at. My brain works very similar to yours. Yeah. But it's not on the level that yours is at. Right. Yeah, it's tough to live with me. It's exhausting, to, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and I put a good mask on to everyone yeah. and a good front on to everyone. Yeah. But, um, what do you do? You do like meditation, cold water? Do you do any breath work the, the at prob- all? The problem I'm finding is, because I, 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 I'm so 100 mile an hour inside my mind all the time, I yeah. struggle to stick at things. Right, okay. Um, and eat, and Have you tried anything? Man. Um, I have done bits and bats. I think got I'm tra- like the, the gym. I've started training again the past few months, and that's keeping me, you know, me, me happiness up and my positive thoughts, and not letting them, you know, the bullshit yeah. creep into my head. Um, but it's it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's, it's hard, it's, mate. It's, it's hard for me to sit there and to. Um, it's like a bit like diaries. Uh, my miss will tell you she'll buy me a diary for like job lists that I've got to do, and you know I've. I've got this coming up and I need to plan for this and like before you know it I'll, I'll, I'll have a diary I'll open it I'll do two or three pages on it you know we need to do this need to sort that out need to ring in the email da 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 um, and then before you know it I've like lost where I've put that diary yeah. um, I've then got another diary that I'd already like started a few weeks ago before that and yeah. before you know it there's seven diaries there's like me I'm writing I'm like definitely dyslexic so my handwriting's shocking and, and nothing's organised so I, yeah. my missus is like me, um, I, I don't put it on her as much now and we're not really working as a team at the moment which is something that I need to do but because yeah. um, she's very organised and she, she's I think we're both like good for each other as a team yeah. um, lot to be said about that isn't there yeah there is yeah yeah lot to be said about that yeah because like, I don't like writing lists, I don't like doing it. Yeah, yeah. I've got amazing people around me. Yeah, well, that's probably. what you need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then our our yeah. skill set is, you know, the, the face of everything and getting yeah. the business. The vision, the, the kind. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Doing all. Yeah. That. Uh, you've got you've got to put some practices in place. You. Yeah, yeah. One of them is literally sitting with yourself and asking yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's what I need to do. I need to do it cause because I, I I'm feel so like fast. I feel like if you're gonna you're gonna stop. I, I'm at you point. feel like you're gonna scared if you stop. You're gonna like it'll all fucking crumble yeah. on you, and everybody go. Oh, I fucking told you, little fucking. I'm aware. Li- with a, with little Ben's yeah, gonna yeah. do it. I told you, you won't fucking yeah. make it. The, the the problem. What's I've at a point now. What's slowing me down from me progressing onto the next step and next step um, is, and I've hit it now. It's I need to be, I need to be organized planning yeah. um, everything's very sporadic and and, and yeah. too um all over the show and it, it, it's at the point now where it's holding me back yeah um because because yeah you need someone to do yeah it then, yeah don't you? and but i don't it, think it's your missus it's not my missus because my, my missus she's working yeah, yeah, yeah she's yeah. she's got you know she's looking after our little girl then look for a pa um, look for a, yeah I, that's what I, that's what i probably need that's that's, that's probably what you need yeah. most before you but, do anything but else. again ben thinking that he can take on the world and do everything on his own uh, this is where it's getting to the point now where I'm I'm stuck and you know I've got the new shop opening next year and some really big things happening. We've got some big brands that that want to yeah. do work that are, are massive um, that I've managed to network myself into and get them contacts. Um, but then it's like I'll I'll get to a point where I get a meeting in place and you know something can happen and then it's like fucking hell. But then I need to do that and then and then it's like it's a mess. <laughs> You need someone well, right it. next yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. I need, need, I someone, need next, someone next to me to, to be yeah, like, right, you you know, you need to do this. Because wor- I'll work till what, you know, me, people that know me will tell you when, you know, when 
I, I were cutting air mobile when COVID come because um, I got to the point where I was like, my head had fell off. I had, I had a little week or two, didn't do any work, which you know I'd only ever done when I would go on holiday somewhere I'd stop. Um, I was cutting air at like, um, you know, I've cut, I've cut air at three in the morning, me four in the morning, Christmas Eve, just to earn that extra 20 quid on that guy and so da, 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 and, and fucking mad, mate. It's so not so, bad, it's just yeah, what makes yeah, you, yeah, you done it. Yeah, yeah, it's I me. love it, mate, honestly, I um, love it. It's just like, you've just, you, we, we know who you are and what you're about. You just need that person on the right hand side. Yeah, yeah, I do. Just to kind of write, yeah, then yeah. you're going to be here at this time. Yeah, yeah. Then you need to I need be here a, at I this probably time. need a piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you do. A million percent. Yeah. It's all you need. You yeah. fucking everything will just fucking go like that. Yeah, that's what. You yeah, that. you're right. Because I'm try, I'm, I'm then trying to like, like you say, do it. You're trying everything. to do stuff that you, you're not meant to be doing. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not in your makeup. Yeah, yeah. Like the same with me. I can't do like, it. I, I don't even got my calendar. Better yeah, does yeah. all my emails. Yeah, yeah. I don't do any emails. Yeah, that's what I need. I don't want to open up emails in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I need. So there we go. We'll look into that. Easy. What yeah. is next for Ben? Tell us about what's coming up. I'm what, excited about what's coming up for you. Um, so coming up, so um, new shop. So we're, we're moving. So where we're based now, it's like we're a little bit out of the way. Um, obviously, because, you know, COVID coming, that kind of wiped me out financially with, with the other shop that I was in um, and, and, and everything else. So then I, I, I set up this new place um, where we've been at now for, for, for two years um a little bit it's like two minutes up the road from from the city centre um in Ancorts and we've just outgrown it mate we um for for the direction that I want to take the business to we need to now move the location we need a bigger space um the footfall of people that are walking past it it's amazing um so we can pick up a lot of new business there um and the area will I'm I'm certain is just going to catapult us um because of the, the people that are there and, and how busy it is and the area is very sought after. It's Ancorts in Manchester, I don't know if you know it, but it's definitely like the more sought after place where all the young professionals, young people want to live. Um, and I've managed to get my hands on a shop which is right in the middle of it, uh, which has been 12 months of fucking back and forth um, stress. Um, there are a big planning. We've actually had to move, I'm, I'm actually moving to another one that's like, Hundred meters away from the original one that I was going to move to uh, for some planning, planning application that 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 um, wouldn't be accepted for the some like structural um, issues with the building. Um, so it were like that. This this last year for me has been I've been ready to move twelve months ago. Must have killed you. Uh, it's killed me, mate. Yeah, I've been I've 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 battled it this year because. You know, everyone. Oh, you know, everyone. You're doing all right where you are, and it's like, no, I'm not. You might think that I'm doing all right, but my head's fucking absolutely going underpants because I'm I'm not where anywhere near <laughs> where, underpants. and I feel like I've missed a year, even though I've not, because yeah, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I've learned a lot this year as well. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like I'm like I should be here, but right now I'm here. Um, so that's it's been, but then now it we've ended up moving into a, a better one because it does. A, bit more foot f- it's, per- it's perfect this shop everything it's happens like, for a reason like everything happens for a reason yeah yeah it? you know in Amsterdam where it's all cobbled streets I've never been at all well it's amazing you need to go there um, and it, it's it's like well, it's like London it, it's just sick mate this area that I'm going to um, and it's it's a really it's not even up and coming it, it's already there are you thinking um, of setting up an academy in there? Yeah, so then we're gonna uh, we've got a product range that's gonna be coming out um, that I'm just I'm, I'm not even talking anything about it really until i've or yeah. doing anything with it until i've got it right um so we're still like we had a company making it and, and i'm not 100 percent happy with it and then we're trying to sort the packaging from somewhere else and um the branding which obviously we're here for um mm-hmm. and then um training academy um because i think because i've done the job for i've done it 12 13 years now and i've you know I'm a, I like the teaching side. I love cutting air and I love cutting clients and it, you know, it, it, that's what I'll, I'll always continue to do. But I think it's going to get to a point where I need to step back and take a day to actually, you know, get content for, for the socials and, and plan for the next steps for the business or take a bit of a step back and then um, train an academy side. Um, we're going to, we're going to eventually open um, 
maybe in the next two years I think that we'll get the new shop open first see how everything hopefully runs with that and then um, and look, then the Ben Duffy and then the, personal brand um, that's something you want me to do but I don't know if I want to be an influencer out but it's um, not being an influencer mate it's, it's called yeah. being a role model yeah yeah um, like you are with your daughter yeah yeah you know and, and there's a lot of people there's a lot of young kids out there that, that need your mindset when going yeah. into business and yeah, stuff yeah. Like. and it's you know yeah do you know what I, I, I am going to start doing it to be fair I want to put a, a, a positive message out and um, you know the a lot of people that I meet especially and I know this obviously I'm meeting people all the time and you know they'd love to have their own business and and that kind of thing and I think it's just it would be good to put a message out and I, I think you've got to be real and, and not sugarcoat it I think a lot of like social media influence and how it's all like um, I think it's fake a lot of it's fake um, Whereas I think the content that I want to put on, I'll keep it real to what I'm doing, like giving advice and showing people, you know, the, how to do certain things and um, and to just encourage them to obviously set their own business up or whether it, not even business, you know, anything that they want to try and and, and, and cut bad habits out of. Um, I'm excited to go on the journey we make. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it's for sick. life. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited yeah, yeah. for it. It's going to be yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah, good. I can't do it on my Thank own. You. Yeah, yeah. I can't no, do it on my own. You've got to do it with people, haven't you? Yeah, you just got to fucking... Yeah. I, I just tell everybody, just everybody's just got to turn up and do a bit. Yeah, yeah. Just turn up and do a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah? definitely. But not for yourself, just do it for other people. Yeah, just turn yeah. up and fucking to do a bit. To help people, yeah, yeah, as well. Because everyone's so self, you know, on their own. You've got to, yeah. you've got to share it, haven't you, and help people. You've and, got to. Um, you've got to be part of something yeah, bigger yeah. than yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a couple of lads... Um, a couple of months ago that uh, set it, they, they were both working in a shop for someone um, and they, they contacted me and said, you know, we're looking at setting up our own shop in Manchester. So essentially they were a competitor um, and they were like, w w you know, could you give us any help on, with the, could you have a look at this lease? Um, so half of me, I thought like, I thought, should I be doing this? I thought, because you're going to be a competitor and you're asking me to help you. And then other half said, I thought, well, people have helped me um, you know, there's no there's no manual to follow in business. You need to ask people advice. You've got to figure it out yourself. Um, so I went back and forth with phone calls with these two lads. They were like, oh, you know, I'm just a bit nervous. It's a big lease and a big commitment. And, and I just basically, I, I just talked them through it. And I said, listen, go for it. Um, I got behind them. I helped them. Um, and now they're on Dean's Gate and they've got their own shop. And I actually, not just saying it, I don't think they had the balls to do it if I didn't like give them that little bit of a kick and say, you know, that lease is good and da da da. So essentially, I've helped someone set up a business uh, near and me. That's what Ben Duffy's brand's going to be doing. Yeah. Exactly um, that. Yeah. So just like, you know, just setting that Ben Duffy brand up to just like anybody who's thinking about getting to barbering or yeah, opening yeah. up your own shop. That, yeah, yeah. That's what you that's what you're Yeah, yeah. About, and right? giving advice yeah, on yeah, the journey yeah, that yeah. I've been You'd on. You'd love and, that. I know yeah, yeah, no, like, I would your I eyes like helping. Light up yeah, when you yeah. Said that. Yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, we'll see. There's a lot to come, I think. Right, well, Ben, appreciate you, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like this is stage one podcast. I think yeah, that yeah. was going to be a stage yeah, two yeah, podcast. Stage Thank three. you for having me on as well, mate. I proper appreciate Honestly, it. I appreciate um, you telling me story. I appreciate yeah. Really grateful that you shared that with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fucking sick. I yeah, love yeah, it. Sick. Thank you, mate. You're welcome. Nice one for that. Thank you for listening, everybody. Goodbye.